YouTube. What's up? It's your boy Antha Barber coming back at you with another haircut tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing a classic high and tight with a hard part and we're even going to add some texture on top. So I'm going to kick this haircut off by saturating the hair on top with water. And this is kind of just a preference thing, but before I like to do my shear work, I like to saturate the hair with water because it gives me a little bit more control. So now that I have my client's hair saturated and combed out, I'm going to begin my shear work. I'm looking to give my client finger length on top, and so what that means is I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to pull a section of hair up. I'm going to allow my fingers to fall on the shape of his head, and anything that goes above my fingers, I'm going to be removing which is going to leave him finger length. I'm re-pulling up the front section of his hair, so in the fringe or the bang area, because if you notice when I pulled my first section, that hair wasn't falling into the section that I was pulling up. And so some clients' um, hair lays differently or stands differently in that area, so you might always want to take that into consideration when doing shear work. So right here I'm going to just be adding a little bit of texture, and the way I'm doing that is I'm taking my shears and I'm coming in with them about halfway closed and I'm slithering them or I'm gliding them across my client's hair and anytime I feel that those shears want to stop I'm gonna go ahead and slightly open and close them to allow them to continue to slither or slide their way throughout his hair and I'm gonna do this in an evenly guide like formation that way I keep everything consistent so now that my shear works done I'm gonna come in with my Babyliss FX clipper and I'm coming in with the lever closed and I'm going to begin to set and create my first guideline which is going to be my bald guide. I'm choosing to set it with this because it's going to allow me to struggle less when I go to remove that bald line. So now that my bald guideline was created, I'm going to take my Babyliss Pro Skeleton FX and I'm going to continue to remove the rest of the bulk left behind. So now that I remove the rest of the hair, I'm going to come in with my Babyliss Pro FX02 foil shaver and I'm going to completely bald out that guide that was created. I am going to use that flick out motion when I get towards the top of that guideline because I do want to demonstrate a clean transition from completely bald to stubble because later that's going to help this blend pop. So now that my bald guideline was created, I'm going to come back in with my Babyliss Pro FX, this time with the lever open, and I'm going to begin to set and create my next guideline. This is a high and tight, however, I'm still going to give myself enough space when setting in this guide to stretch the blend because I feel like this area of the blend on a high and tight is a lot more important than the next step because I feel like this is where the magic happens. So 
So now that I created the guide with the lever open, I'm now gonna close my lever and begin to blend from the bottom of this guide right back up towards the top of this guide. And little by little as I work my way up, you're gonna notice that I open my lever. And every time I open my lever and work my way up, that guideline's gonna move up with me. But that's okay because that's exactly what I'm looking for. By the time I get towards the top of this guide and my lever's fully extended, it'll be completely blended out. So now that that guy's blended out, I'm going to come in with my wall number one guard with the lever fully open. And this time I'm not looking to set or create any guideline. I am going to use that flick out motion like I just demonstrated to you. And the reason why I'm going to use that flick out motion when I get towards the top is because I want that transition from that blend to that length on top to begin now. So I'm looking to connect it the best that I can with that number one guard. However, I know it's not going to connect it completely, so I'll show you how to do that later. So once my guide is set with the lever fully open, I'll now close my lever and begin to blend from the bottom of this guide right back up towards the top of this guide. I will be stopping right underneath where I just left off with the lever fully open. A lot of people ask me, how come you don't just set it with the lever fully closed and then attack it with the half guard? Well, that one with the lever fully open is going to help me transition into my next step. And so that's exactly why it's important to take that one close right underneath it. So the one close tends to leave weight behind right where I'm showing you. So I'm going to come in with my wall half guard with the lever fully open and I'm going to begin to attack that weight right above the area that I see. So right where I seen that weight, I'm going to attack right above it and I'm going to use the fade down process to eliminate it, meaning I'm going to close my lever as needed, working my way down until that guide's completely blended out. So now that my blend's coming together, I'm going to look to remove that bulk between the blend and the length on top. And so I'm going to use clipper over comb to do it. And everything that I'm showing you falling in the teeth of the comb right now, that's what I'm looking to remove to allow that transition to happen. All right, so now that my cut's starting to come together, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that hard part in now. This is where my client likes his hard part. 
and I feel like it complements his haircut the most. So anytime I set in a hard part, you'll see what I'm doing now is I'll begin to create the shape that I'm looking for. Once I create the shape and the length and the, the distance that I'm looking to set the hard part, I'll then flip my clipper and I'll begin to clean up the other bottom half of it. So there's always two parts to a hard part. That's the top and the bottom. And typically I see a lot of people only clean up that top, but I feel like it's important to clean up the bottom just as much and then finalize everything with the razor. So now that I set the foundation to the haircut I want to give my client, I'm going to go ahead and begin to do my detail work and finalize everything. This is what's going to separate you from all the barbers that cut next to you or in the area with you is where you take that extra time to really customize the haircut to fit your client best. So here it is to look at the final cut. If you got anything useful out this, I ask that you smash that like button. If you're new to my channel, I suggest you stick around. It's only going to get doper from here. We just hit 25K. I said we because we're a community. So congratulations to us. 25K we here. Again, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Be blessed and be a blessing. I'm out.